Well, hi there. Good afternoon, and welcome to Hour 2 of Home Wizards. Cindy Dole here, where we love talking about the spaces you call home and hopefully to help you improve them one by one to improve your home and improve your life. That's what we love to do every Saturday from 2 to 4. And as we uh, work our way into the second hour, we're going to help you in the garden because who doesn't love to have homegrown tomatoes? We're going to talk with the tomato king and pretty much answer any question you ever thought of in terms of what you're doing right, what you may be doing wrong, what are some of the new cool uh, heirlooms to be thinking about and tasting and enjoying and and who knows whatever else. We're going to get you covered in terms of tomatoes, so it's going to be a lot of fun uh, throughout the hour. And by the way, as you're listening and you wish you could hear it again, not to worry, you can always go back to the website. We post all the shows there. Oh, it's up by Monday. Uh, if you go to cindydole.com, just go to the on-air section. In fact, you can go there later today and, and hear last Saturday's show. We had so much fun talking with Billy Darian, uh, who is on HGTV and DIY and has so many great ideas in terms of helping you just make your outdoor space look cool. We talked about front yard entryway ideas and then the backyard too. And his tip, which I think is really, really cool, is to just start by looking at websites, uh, vacation websites. And once you're inspired by whether it's Fiji or Cancun or you love Arizona or whatever is your dream getaway, you'd look at those images and you look at those plants and now suddenly that becomes your well, your your floor plan, your idea, uh, your roadmap to to kind of start creating your own little private oasis in the backyard. So something you can think about this weekend. Uh, 888-KFWB980 is the number. And again, the website, cindydole.com. And by the way, before we get to my next guest, I want to make sure you go check out on the Facebook page. If you go to Facebook, follow Cindy. You've got to check out the monarch in the making. Uh, I'm very excited because every day we wake up and we go out to our patio. And uh, it's because of this milkweed plant. We had our... Uh, a monarch garden specialist on the show a few months back, and he gave me a milkweed plant along with the actual uh, monarch caterpillar. And so over the past few weeks, we've been watching this process as, as it transforms into um, the cocoon, and now it's soon going to be the monarch butterfly. And it's so cool because inside this this cocoon, you can see the actual orange and black markings of the monarch uh, wings. And so now the cocoon is kind of in a darkest chocolate brown uh, color. And next, in the next Next few days, it will turn kind of a grayish white, and then poof. When any without an announcement, it'll just get out of its cage and start flying away. So I'm hoping I'm going out there every hour, hoping I can catch it all and then share it with you uh, in in the form of some uh, photos and maybe even a video on the Facebook page. All right. So let's get to our, our tomato expert because I know that you love homegrown tomatoes. Who doesn't? But how are yours growing these days? I forget all about the sweating and digging Every time I go out and pick me up big Homegrown tomatoes, homegrown tomatoes <laughs> oh, yes. You know, there are a lot of tomato songs, and, of course, the Tomato King knows all that. Steve Gatto is with us, and, and he's in the San Diego area. Are you there right now, Steve? Hi. Good morning, Cindy. Good Thanks morning. for having me. What's up in San Diego for you these days? Uh, nice and warm today. Um, I've got my tomatoes in the ground, and they're doing very, very well. Yeah? All right. Well, we have a lot to ask you because uh, the tomato is, well, I, I didn't realize that it's huge in antioxidants. Uh, absolutely. They have a, um, a enzyme there called uh, lycopene, which is uh, something that physically is noted to uh, not cure cancer, but to slow up the process of cancer. Isn't that great? Yeah, it's great. And, and it, they also taste good, too. And, and I, I don't know about you, but I sometimes find myself craving tomatoes. What's up with that? Well, you know, it's the sugar content. It's just like any, any good candy bar or soda pop, you know, with the sugar, you always want to crave more. And with a properly grown tomato, especially with the heirloom varieties, and using organic methods, you can actually build the sugar content, and it's all sugar when it comes to the flavor of the tomato. Oh, really? Absolutely. Okay, all right. So right now you said you are, obviously, as the tomato king, you're always a success with your, your tomatoes, or do you have, have do you have a couple duds from time to time? Well, the, the sunlight shines in my backyard like it does in everybody else's backyard. You know, I don't think I'm immune to having duds. And <laughs> absolutely, you know, weather is a factor, uh, you know, climate is a factor, and, and I do have those challenges. Uh, if we choose the right varieties, we can overcome some of those. But, 
you know, when it becomes an act of God, you know, there's nothing you could do when he decides that he doesn't want to let your tomatoes grow to uh, maturity. Mm -hmm. Well, so hopefully you can kind of get us started and talk us through whether it's from seed or plant to to getting it to our plate, you know, and enjoying those yummy tomatoes. Um, But is it true that there's some really funky tomatoes out there right now, one called the mortgage lifter? Oh, absolutely. What Um, is that? (laughs) You know, the powers that be have named a lot of these varieties, and uh, the mortgage lifter is a variety called an heirloom. Heirlooms are old-fashioned varieties that have been around for years and years and years and years, and Mortgage Lifter has an interesting story. Um, um, do we have time for the story? Yeah, go ahead. Um, basically, uh, someone, um, I think it was in either Texas or something, in, someplace in that area, had, um, uh, had a repair shop, and a, a gentleman came by. This was in the early 1900s, and uh, came by to have his automobile fixed, and apparently he didn't have the, the funds to, to pay the, the mechanic, but he did have these tomato seeds. And so the guy took them in trade, planted them in the ground, and the story is that he produced these huge, wonderful-tasting tomatoes and, and physically thought, well, shoot, I got more than I could eat. Maybe I could sell a few of these, and literally paid off the mortgage on either his house or his automobile shop or whatever it could have been, but that's how the story went. That's a great story, and I guess it kind of applies to today, too, with all of us wanting to have a victory garden and, you know, be able to keep our mortgage and keep our house. Oh, yeah, that's true, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. Um, Well, let's get started. Let's say that we haven't really started growing tomatoes yet. Help us just kind of figure out where to begin and, um, you know, what are some of the mistakes to, to kind of avoid? Well, I think uh, depending on how dedicated you are, the majority of us, you know, have the availability now at this particular date to go to a retail garden center and select between maybe 40 to 140 varieties of heirloom tomatoes, depending on how aggressive, you know, that retailer could be. Or you can go online and you can find add just as many uh, tomatoes online. So I think uh, uh, common knowledge is, you know, people will go to the website, buy two or three plants that they think that they would like to enjoy of many different varieties, and then go ahead and either buy them online or go to the retail garden center. That's probably the quickest and easiest way is just to buy the seedling. Mm-hmm. Um, those of us that might be a little bit more dedicated or, like for myself, just kind of a fanatic, you know, we'll go to the website and we'll buy seeds. And uh, growing seeds or planting seeds and actually growing seeds uh, in your backyard are, is just as easy. It'll take about a month or six weeks longer depending on where you're at. And uh, you can get the same results, you know, either by seed or by seedling. Right, right. You know, so that that would be the first thing. Um, once uh, the seedlings are grown or once you have your seedlings in hand, you plant them in the ground. But the most important thing is make sure that you treat your soil correctly because when it comes to growing tomatoes, some of the mistakes that people make is that they'll put it in the ground, think that the ground will provide for the plant, and the majority of the time it will. But let's say that you may have an issue with the soil or you're in an area where there could be, let's say, a high salt content. If you're not preparing your soil properly, Soil is everything when it comes to growing. So what is the best soil for tomatoes? What do well, they, they like? they like a loamy, kind of a soft, aerated soil. Uh-huh. You know, unfortunately, like I live in the San Diego area, and I probably have the worst soil here in, San Di- San Di- uh, in California. Sorry, San Diegans, but uh, it's just heavy clay. Yeah, well, we have that, some of that here, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes there's rocks in the clay, or sometimes the clay is as hard as the rock. And obviously, it's impossible to grow a decent tomato. So it's too mushy, right? Is it suffocating the tomato? That Uh, yeah, you know when there when you have heavy clay, the particles are so small that it doesn't allow for proper oxygenation and water penetration, and the roots have to struggle to get through the soil. And with that stress involved in trying to produce fruit, it doesn't really lend to the best crop that you know you can actually grow. So loamy soils are one of the best soils if you. uh, If you have that heavy clay soil, you obviously have to mend it. And there's a lot of different products out there on the market. You know, basically a person will put compost in, either a manure product or even go to the retail garden center and buy in a bag soil that's already pre-mixed and pre-prepared. But you have to till it into the soil and loosen up the soil to, you know, get that water penetration and that that proper oxygenation. But then the looseness of the soil so that the roots can roam freely in the soil and we'll be real, be real happy. Mm-hmm. And what about if we were to try it in a container? Would we be more successful if we are with this clay soil and we don't really see our, ourselves taking the time to amend the soil? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, that's another avenue that you could take to produce a tomato. Uh, one of the mistakes in container growing is that most people will buy a container that's way too small. Mm. You know, when they go to the retail garden center and select the seedling, you'll see a plant that's four to six inches tall, thinking that you could put it into a one- or two-gallon container. 
Um, there are one thing that we all have to realize is that there are two major classes in tomatoes. One's called the indeterminate. Uh, indeterminate plant is a large plant with a large root system. And they also have a determinate plant, which is a small plant with a, obviously a much smaller root system. Well, 90% of the plants that are selected at the retail garden center level are the indeterminate varieties, large plants. They buy a one or two gallon container and they'll find that within several months that plant literally outgrows that container. And that's the biggest mistake that most of us make. With an indeterminate variety, I always recommend a container about a 15-gallon stock nursery size container, which is about, I think, about 14 inches across and about maybe 15 or 16 inches deep. Okay, well, hold that thought, Steve. We're going to have plenty more to talk about. We're talking with the Tomato King, and we're going to find out how to not only be a successful tomato grower, but how to diagnose some of the kind of icky things that can go wrong, because it always happens. I mean, we don't want that green horn caterpillar to get us. And what about fried green tomatoes? you got it all right here. Home Wizard Cindy Dole. The fun continues right after this. Memories of sunny love just hang on. You like tomato, I like tomato, potato, potato, tomato, tomato, let's call the whole thing. Well, you knew we had to use that song, a classic, as we're talking about tomatoes, right? Cindy Dole here, Home Wizards, and how are your tomatoes growing? Well, with me is the tomato king, Steve Gatto, who's given us all the tips and all the schnips and helping us get smarter on tomatoes. Boy, Steve, are there more than 7,000 varieties? How many How many thousands of kinds of tomatoes are out there today? Well, I understand there's uh, close to 5,000 5, cataloged. 5,000 cataloged? Cataloged varieties. Now, you know, if you tell me that there's 7,000, I could believe it because I don't think that anybody, any one person or any one entity has identified every single one of the varieties. Yeah, and it just keeps coming, oh, right? absolutely. So another interesting name that I heard of that, that exists these days is the purple Cherokee tomato. Cherokee purple, yeah. Extremely, extremely flavorful tomato. You know, it's uh, what they considered a dark-colored or a black tomato. And most people will think, you know, when I introduce a black tomato, I get that feeling in the back of their minds. They're thinking, well, I don't eat anything that's black. But if you're a connoisseur of, like, fine wines, you know, you have your burgundies and your mm. reds, and mm-hmm. they're more full body, full flavor. I really kind of liken the purple, a turkey purple to a red wine, uh, full flavored, a little bit more of a smokiness to it, a little bit more of a saltiness to it. And uh, a very, very wonderful tomato eating raw or even putting in a salsa. Mm. Uh, we, we first were introduced um, oh, years ago with a black tomato when we first cut it open. We thought, oh, my God, we can't eat this thing. It's brown and purple inside. You know, obviously there's something wrong with it. And someone said, no, 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 this is a dark-colored tomato, but put it in the salsa because, no, first of all, nobody would know. But we found out because of the accentuating flavor of a black tomato that it actually brought out the flavors and the real goodnesses of the red tomatoes that were in the salsa. Well, it sounds really complex, and I love how you compare it to wine tasting because uh, you sent me some really great pictures we're going to put on the website. You guys have tomato tastings, just like wine tastings. We have tomato tastings. Um, In fact, they'll be starting here in a couple of weeks here in Southern California. You can go to my website and find out where and when. Um, But, well, at these events, what we normally do is kind of a marketing thing because when we had a hundred varieties of tomatoes when I used to grow tomatoes here for distribution in California uh, we had so many different varieties that customers and even the retail garden center staff members didn't know what all the different varieties were so we the, we thought the best way to introduce it to customers was were to bring the varieties slice them up put them on a table let the retail customers come in and graze let them eat until their lips bleed <laughs> and enjoy all the different varieties and what we found there was you know, you had someone that was apprehensive about buying a black tomato or even a green tomato. How, how do you eat a green tomato? Well, you come into the uh, to the tasting and try a green tomato. Well, it's and, fried, right? Isn't it fried green tomatoes? Well, no, we're talking about a ripe green tomato, <laughs> which is a little bit different from a fried green tomato. But the customer come in and taste it and, and enjoy the wonderful sweetness. You know, they'll think that it's tart and bitter because it is green. But you have this uh, tomato flavor with high acid content and that that uh, sweetness, that sugar content that I was talking about earlier. 
just kind of explode in their mouth, and then obviously they're hooked, and that that's how we got to buy those, have them buy the green tomatoes the following year. Well, when you're t- when you're tasting all these different kinds of tomatoes side by side, I mean, there's a lot of acid in a tomato, right? How do you kind of cleanse the palate and continue going on down the line? Doritos. Doritos. <laughs> Tortilla chips. <Okay. laughs> A little more uh, salt, huh? Well, uh, uh, actually, we use the unsalted type. All we have them do is uh, uh, take a, a bite of it or nibble over that and just kind of, it, it really does clean, cleanse the palate very well. Mm, okay. All right. And, yeah, the salt kind of helps a little bit, too. <laughs> well, you mentioned going to the website, and it's basically gotomatous.com, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, which is really easy to find, and you have all kinds of good tips and, and uh, the calendar of events, so that's good to know in your yes. seminars and such. Um, all right, well, let's talk about, in terms of, we, you've helped us kind of get started with tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Some of the other essentials, uh, we were speaking in the earlier in the hour about watering. Um, as, as we choose the right kind of soil, whether it's going to be in that nice nice, um, you know, loomy, soft soil that isn't all clay, like many of us unfortunately have, uh-huh. or if it's in a container, we need to think about how much water it's going to require, right? Yes, I think the, that's the biggest uh, problem that most of us have when it comes to growing the tomatoes is that the majority of us will overwater our plants. We're going to overwater tomatoes too, huh? Always overwater the tomatoes. Generally, uh, what happens, especially in a container, if you overwater uh, you notice that the uh, foliage from the bottom up starts to turn yellow. And, mm-hmm. you know, people will liken that as a disease issue, which it, is, it can be if you uh, let it progress. But generally, that's just the plant telling you that, hey, I'm being overwatered, that just to back off. So how do you know how much water to give a tomato plant? Because everybody's soil is different, the climates are different, depending on where, where you live in California. And uh, the way that I teach it in the, in the class is that, uh, generally for the first month, I would give the, water, uh, the plant water, but make sure that when you water, you give it a really deep soak. Okay, so if you have a heavy clay soil, I let the water run very slowly around the plant, but I'll let the water run for up to a half hour to 45 minutes. I'm talking a really deep soak. And for the first four weeks, only water once a week. And I don't care how hot it is. Um, you know, if it's in a full sun, if the foliage is drooping, it's okay. The plant is a weed and will grow very, very well as long as you don't overwater it. Remember, they like to have a little bit of oxygenation in the soil. Mm-hmm. Um, in a container, almost the same thing, just uh, water. But uh, instead of putting one application of water down, I usually put three applications. Yeah, I've done down. that before. For just yeah. about all my containers, the, the three, <laughs> the trifecta, it seems to work, right? You let right. You- you yeah, because the first time you add water, the water really doesn't get absorbed into uh-huh. the core of the pot. And so you wait a couple of minutes. Let, let it drain. It soak, right, let mm-hmm. it soak down, let it drain, and then apply again and do the exact same thing the third time. And every single time you do water or irrigate the plant, you actually use that same method every single time. Yeah. But this, I... is the, this is the secret, though. How do you know if the plant needs water? Well, one of the things that we never do is look at the plant in the hot afternoon sun, especially after 11 o'clock in the morning, and if the foliage is drooping, add water. Because that plant is just telling you it's hot. It doesn't need water. The best way to tell if a plant needs water is to look at the plant first thing in the morning before the air temperature rises, like before 9 o'clock in the morning. And if the foliage is drooping at that time, that's the best time to put water. I see. So don't worry. Don't freak out if it's drooping in the heat of the day. No, not at all. It's uh, it's a survival thing for the plant itself. And uh, it's just, like I said, it's just telling you that it's hot, especially if it's in a container, depending on the type of container. You know, if it's in a, one of those black nursery stock containers, mm-hmm. the the sun physically solarizes that pot and it really warms up the soil. So the, the plant's going to go into kind of a heat stress, but it isn't telling you that it needs water, especially if you've been watering it every single day because the foliage is drooping. Okay, that's a great tip. All right. Now, are there certain varieties of tomatoes that are easier to grow than others? Well, cherries are pretty foolproof. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just seems like they don't, they're don't they not really finicky about uh, heat issues, cold issues. Uh, they'll produce almost in any type of climate. Um, you know, obviously, if it isn't freezing or if it isn't into the 125-degree range, but uh, they're, they're, they're by far the easiest ones to grow. Mm-hmm. Okay, and if we want to have maybe the intermediate <laughs> tomato, what would you say is a little more difficult? And then the, what's the hardest to grow? Well, the hardest to grow are usually the larger tomatoes, you know, into the three, four, five pound range. And uh, the, the problem there is I think uh, here in California, you know, we have a lot of trees, mountains, and high rises, and uh, those particular varieties will need at least eight to ten hours of full sunlight. And if you're trying to grow, and if you're off the west, you know, if you're off the coast and you have, you know, overcast days, 
you know, you may have six hours of full sun and you have some of the filtered light throughout the day. Unfortunately, depending on where you're at and the type of exposure you have, you're going to have problems with that, that, that sunlight exposure. And so the larger tomatoes obviously are definitely, definitely going to be a lot harder. All right. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I want you to help us diagnose some of the strange things that have happened to my tomatoes and maybe are happening to others who are listening. Maybe the, the leaves are not only yellow, but how about the tomato itself is kind of splitting or cracking, right? What is up with that? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and we can't forget the tomato hornworm. I hate that guy. Home Wizards here. We're talking with the Tomato King for more wisdom on how to get great tomatoes. Home Wizards, Cindy Dole. We're back right after this. Gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rain. 